is a planet, why does it shine like a star? These are all wonderful questions. Well, just like the Earth shines when the sun is shining on it, if you were off of Earth and looking back at it, you would see that shine. And Venus shines like a star, even though it's not emitting its own light, but it is reflecting the light from the sun. Thank you. Joshua Roberts, please ask your question to Dr. Dave. What happens in an astronaut's body when he or she gets the bends? And has any astronaut ever gotten the bends during spacewalk? Well, that's a really good question because most of us think of the bends as a problem that people experience when they go scuba diving. So the question is, why would you have a problem like that when you go in space? And one of the challenges we face is when we go outside to do a spacewalk, the pressure inside our space suit is less than the pressure inside the spacecraft that we're in, whether that's the space shuttle or the International Space Station. In the case of the space suits that Rick and I were using and that Clay and I were using, the pressure in the suit's 4.3 psi. Now, the pressure on the surface of the Earth or inside the spacecraft is 14.7 psi. So as that pressure decreases, it's just like a scuba diver going from down underneath the surface coming back up to the surface itself. And in that situation, you're at risk of getting the bends. And the best analogy for the bends is what happens if you have a soft drink, a soda pop container, and you take the top off too quickly. You get all sorts of bubbles coming out of solution. And if the pressure around your body decreases quickly, you can get bubbles of gas coming out of solution in your bloodstream, and that's not really very good for you. So we do a whole number of uh, preventive maneuvers called pre-breeze protocols to remove that nitrogen gas from our body because nitrogen is the uh, gas that's dissolved in the solution that would come out and cause the bend. Sarah Ingram, please ask your question to Commander Kelly. How does the darkness of space affect you? Well, uh, when we're flying around the Earth on the space shuttle, most of the time we have the uh, the lights on in the in the uh, crew cabin here or inside the space station, so we can do our work. But sometimes when we're when when we're, when we're done working, we can uh, turn the lights down uh, very very low and look out the window, and and then when you let your eyes adjust, you can see uh, many many more stars uh, than you could on Earth, and they're very much more distinct, and they don't twinkle. And it really gives you an appreciation for the uh, uh, the privilege of, of being up here in space and getting to fly on the space shuttle and visit the space station. And it's, uh, it's a really, really beautiful sight, and uh, it has a great effect. Thank you. Tiara Slingerland, please ask your question to Barbara Morgan. Can you see the northern lights in space? Ooh, that's a good one. Actually, last night when you just heard Commander Kelly talking about turning off the lights or turning them down as low as we can and looking out at the night sky, and we did that last night, and uh, we watched the night sky for quite a few minutes, and then off in, the, off in the distance, way off in the distance in the horizon, the daylight just started peeking up, and it was this beautiful band of blue that got thicker and thicker with more and more colors of blue in it, and in that band, and we saw, um, it looked first like clouds, but it wasn't clouds, and it was the southern lights. Um, and it spread over quite a large area, and they would kind of, uh, kind of wave and fade in and out. It was quite a sight. Thank you. Tessa Shaw, please ask your question to Dr. Dave. Why do you move so quickly during spacewalks? That's a good question. Uh, you know, in spacewalks, we try not to move quickly. We actually try and move really, really slowly. And the reason is that when we're dressed up in our space suit, we weigh quite a bit. So the property of mass, of course, is the important principle in space. If we get going too quickly, it's uh, very, very hard to get us to stop. And you probably noticed that on our fourth spacewalk, Clay and I were carrying around pretty large pieces of equipment, and we moved very, very slowly. I think it was kind of like watching grass grow when you were watching it through that spacewalk. Thank you, Ms. Boyd. Will the hurricane affect how you
you prepare the shuttle for landing? Um, it won't affect how we prepare for landing. It uh, did affect the fact that we undocked from the space station a day early. And that wasn't because of the weather uh, potentially being bad at our landing site in the, at the Kennedy Space Center. It was about the uh, hurricane potentially hitting the Johnson Space Center in Texas, where our mission control is, and affecting the ability there for the flight controllers to monitor the space shuttle and, and help us through our, our, our landing, deorbit, and landing. Um, however, the, the hurricane now is uh, is heading towards Mexico, and it's unfortunate for the people of Mexico that it's going there. But uh, but for us, what that means is even though we we undock a day early, we might not have to get uh, home on Tuesday as urgently as we did before. Although we're still going to try to land uh, at the Kennedy Space Center or maybe even Edwards Air Force Base on Tuesday. Thank you. Josh Bull, please ask your question to Barbara Morgan. What do you need to know to operate Canada Arm 2? Another excellent question. Well, in order to operate the arm, one thing you need to know well is your geometry. Mathematics really plays an important part, and especially knowing spatial orientation. You also need to be uh, very aware of all the surrounding areas. So you have to have what we call in NASA world um, situational awareness. So you, you know where everything is at all times, because what you don't want to do, that arm is very, very large, and there's a lot of structure everywhere that you can run into if you're not careful.